So now we are going to go over Dijkstra's algorithm. So Dijkstra's algorithm is the algorithm which will, where you start from one vertice and it will find the shortest path to all the other vertices in a weighted graph, a weighted directed graph. Now, of course, this will wait, work on an unweighted graph as well because everything's weight in that case is the same. We just would see everything's just got the weight of one, but you could use a breadth first search algorithm. It would also work on a weighted undirected graph by just simply splitting it into a direct into a directed graph where each edge would be split into two edges. Right? That makes sense? Okay. So um, Dijkstra's algorithm, honestly the hardest part of it is spelling Dijkstra. Uh, the, the original way Dijkstra formulated, he used uh, two, uh, two sets and two arrays. I'm going to instead use two sets and two hash maps, or two sets and two maps. That will make it easier. And also, we're going to refer to these as different names. So um, we need two sets and two arrays. Uh, we had, so originally, Dijkstra said that his sets were called S and VS. Um, S is the set that contains all the vertices that we have figured out the shortest distance to. So we can just simply call this done, right? We can call the set done here, right? And when I do it on the board, I'll refer to it as, as done, right? VS is all the vertices that still need to be processed. So we can call this uh, the set to do, right? Done and to do, nice four letter variables, okay? So stuff we figured out the shortest distance for, stuff that we still need to figure out the short, uh, the um, shortest distance for. Then we have D, V, and P, V. D, V, this is a map where given the key vertex gives us the shortest distance from our starting vertice to the end vertice. Okay, so D for distance. And key is a vertice and the value is the um, combined weight, so an integer. Okay. And everything we're going to start off as a distance of infinity, right? Because we don't know how far away it is. We don't know how to get to it. So we're going to just simply say it's infinitely far away. And then PV, which is, okay, so we can get from, from this other node from this to this destination, V, um, from S. But what was the node before V, right? And that will make sense in a bit. But this allows us, the, this map, P for predecessor, allows us to trace backwards and how it works. So, right, the, he does arrays because he's assuming that the um, nodes are going to be integers and so you, you put them in, in the appropriate index, but we're gonna just deal with, we're gonna assume they're maps so we could use anything, right? So here's our graph. We're gonna choose zero as our starting node, right? And so here's our set uh, of done and here's our to-do set, done, to-do. And then here's our maps. Right, here's the vertices we'd be computing, one, the distance to one, to the distance to two, the distance to three, and the distance to four. We don't have anything initialized for them or, or, any, or any predecessors yet because we, haven't, uh, because we haven't really started the algorithm. We haven't really populated these data, so we haven't put anything in. So we're going to go, so the first step of Dijkstra's is to initialize everything, okay? So the first thing we do is that, well, S is the start vertice. We know how to get there. We just don't go anywhere. So we put it in the done set. And then we take everything else, every all the other nodes, and put them in to do. Okay? So distance, predecessor. So right, take our start vertice, put it in, in here, put everything else in to do. All right? So now we need to populate the initial distances. Right, because this will solve. This is going to solve for our our distances. Um, how? I haven't told you how yet. You kind of need to see it to see how it works. Okay. So what we do is that we first um, look at everything in this set, and then ask if if there's an edge between the starting vertice and me. Then that's our initial distance, right? So. To, uh, there's an edge between, from zero to one, there's an edge from zero to three, and there's an edge from zero to four, sorry, from zero to four of 10, 30, and 100, respectively. So those are our initial distances, 10, 30, 100. All right, two, however, does not have an edge between them. So how much does it take to get there? 
well, we can't really get there from here to there. So we're going to do the next, and but we really don't know how to express that in a way that we can do mathematical comparisons. So we're just going to put uh, put infinite. Uh, how? What's the distance cost? Oh, it's infinite cost to get to node two. That seems fair. Okay. Then we initialize all the predecessors to s to our starting node to zero. Right? You can get from zero to one for a cost of ten by going through zero. You can get from two to two uh, from zero with an initial cost of infinity. You can go from three, so we can go from z node zero to three by going through zero and it'll cost you 30. And then we can get to four from zero with an initial cost of 100, right? So now this is the initialization step and now the loop starts and the loop simply runs until vs is empty. So first we find the vertex in the in our set in our to do set that has the smallest distance right uh, one has ten has a cost of ten two has a cost of infinity three has a cost of thirty four has a cost of a hundred vertex one is the smallest so that's going to be the one that's going to be the so so now that we've iterated through them and we looked at these distances we can conclude that we know that going from the start node to 10, that this over here is the smallest distance to get to node 1. This is the small, this, you can take a look, there's no cheaper way to get to node 1. And we know that because when we started the loop, we went through and checked the costs and found that this was the lowest. All right, so now we basically add it to our done set. And now that it's done, we can use it as a stopping off point to figure out how to get to other nodes. So let's consider all the uh, vertices that are adjacent to, uh, to 1. Okay, u to 2, right, 1 to 2, that has a cost of 50. And if we look at the distance it costs to get to, uh, to 2, right, it costs 50 to get from 1 to 2. How much does it cost to get to 1 initially? It costs 10. So if the distance from the start node to u plus the distance from, from, from u to the node we're considering, if that's smaller than the distance to the node we're considering, we will update it, right? 60 is less than infinity. So we're going to update node two, right? And say, oh, we can get to node two by going through one and it's gonna cost us 60. Okay, so we're done processing one. So now let's look at all, all the nodes. Two has a cost of 60, three has a cost of 30, four has the cost of 100. So three is the cheapest choice, so we figured out the shortest distance to three. Okay, so now let's take a look. We can go to, um, this is an edge we haven't seen before, we can go from three to two using, uh, using this edge, and it will cost us 20 to do that, plus the initial 30 it costs to get to three. 30 plus 20, is that less than what's over here to get to node 2? That's 50 is less than uh, 60. So we're going to update 2 again and say, we, oh, we can get there for even cheaper by going through 3. Continue on to the next vertex. Okay. Next, let's go on to 4. So now, sorry, we need to go from 3 to 4. So 30 plus 60. Right, the cost to get to three plus the cost to use three to get to four, that's going to be 90, which is less than 100. So we'll update four and say, oh, it costs 90 to get to four, and it's 90 if we go through three to get to four. Now we're done with that one, so now let's consider two. So we select two from done, oh, sorry, from to do. Right, and why are we selecting two? Because we have only two nodes left, one with cost of 50, one with the cost of 90, so this one's the cheaper one. So let's look at it. So the cost to get to two is 50. Now let's look at all the edges that come out of two. Right, there's this edge, so, and that costs 10 to get to four. So the cost to get to four is currently 90, right? So is 10, the new way to get, we see to get to 90, plus 50, the way we had to get to two, is that less than four? So it's ten. The new so it's two to, two. This new edge to get from two to four. 
is that less than um, than than 90? Yes, it is. 60 is less than 90, so we update it. We say the new way to get to 4 is by going through 2 for a cost of 60. And now we have only one node left, and there's no other information it can add, give it to us, so we're done. This is Dijkstra's algorithm in short. It is not a particularly hard algorithm. In fact, I'm going to do one on the board uh, right now. So um, we'll do it. But this is the shortest path algorithm. So I'm going to do another one on the board, and then we're going to go into the analysis.